This program is sponsored by Newcastle County Government. Hey everybody, welcome to the Chef Dana Show and do I have a treat for you guys today. We are making something delicious with my friend Jeanette from Bath Kitchen and Tile. Hi Jeanette, how are Hi, you? Hi Chef Dana. I am excited when you told me what we were making today. I was, my, my stomach was just like happy, happy, happy. Great. So today we're going to be making, what is it? We're making uh, salmon. What salmon. else? Salmon. Crepes. Uh-huh. Ooh, salmon crepes. Salmon crepes, crepes uh -huh. with creamy dill sauce. Uh-huh. And I see we're going to be hooking up a salsa here. A mango salsa. Ooh, yes. Yes. So I can't wait to get started on this one. So what is our first step in doing our salmon crepes with mango salsa? And you got something else there. You got a sauce, right? What sauce are we making again? This is the creamy dill sauce. Oh, okay. We have our dill, uh -huh. sour cream, uh -huh. and lemon. Okay, okay. So what's the first thing we need to jump on? We need to jump on the salmon. We gotta get the salmon Because we need to cooked. get that in the oven. Okay. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes, okay. depending upon the thickness of the salmon. Uh -huh. But it's important to watch it because you do not want to overcook fish. Mm, it gets a little dry. It gets a little dry. Okay, okay. So what's our first steps here with the salmon? I got my uh, my pan here. Now okay. Jeanette grease this for us right before we started. So what's our next yes. step? Yes, our next step is I like to cover those fillets with lemon. Okay. And just cut a lemon in half and I just like to squeeze it on the salmon. Okay. Generously. Uh-huh. Don't I be shy. Just don't be shy. Just Salmon really needs a lot of brightening up, and I love the lemon mm -hmm. on the salmon. Just brightens up that natural flavor. Okay. Never be shy with the lemon. Well, you that know is what? what I have learned. Lemon is one of those things that enhances the flavors. Yes. And you actually find you, you use less salt when you have some lemon in there. Very nice. All right. So we got our lemon juice on there. What's yes. next? Yes. Next step is just a little pat of butter. A little pat just of butter. Just a little pat of melted butter not okay. a lot don't don't be afraid of the butter mm -hmm. everything in moderation right there you go just a little bit this is just one pat oh not much at all not much just at all drizzle. just a little drizzle beautiful flavor works so nicely with that lemon Help, helps everything stick helps everything stick <laughs> the next thing i like to do is a little seasoning i like to use garlic salt okay okay Just a little garlic salt, beautiful. Wait and get that little seed off there. And then what's next? And then I love fresh herbs. Now I noticed you have your dill and water there. Does that help keep it fresh? It keeps it fresh. It also is it's pretty. Mm-hmm. It is gorgeous. Now can you do that in the fridge also? Yes. And it just helps make it helps your herbs last the, longer. The herbs last longer. They smell beautiful. Okay. It brings life to the kitchen. Okay. I love it. I love it. I like to rinse the any of the herbs. I like to rinse them in a little bit of water. Uh -huh. And take a little take a paper towel. A little paper towel. A little I got paper you. towel. I got you. Where'd I put it? Oh, right here. This kitchen has so many drawers and so many hiding spots. Now Jeanette, Thank you designed this beautiful kitchen for me. <laughs> oh, isn't it pretty? Chef Dana's selection. Isn't it pretty? Yes, I'm glad you like it. It's good to, it's fun to work in a functioning kitchen that works well, right? Well, it's so important. That's what I loved when I came to you. Uh, when, I, when I went to Bath Kitchen and Tile, I told Jeanette what I wanted, and then she almost put herself like in my shoes and thought about how I would move, things I might need. And I mean, under here, I got this cool little pop-up mixer and my garbage cans right here. So she really worked with me and said, well, chef, you need this and this. And I was like, oh, nobody did that before. So I thank you. You're welcome. Made life easy for <laughs> I'm glad it worked out. And it's fun. I'm using it myself now. Mm -hmm. I can see how my handiwork, if it paid off, right? Yes, yes. So. Oven's right behind me. I love it. <laughs> I like just 
chopping this dill finely. Uh huh. Get in there. Yep. And, and you can smell it. that beautiful fragrance. Especially when you put it with like some lemon. It oh, tastes yes. amazing. And just sprinkle. You can use dry dill also in, in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. They have all the herbs are in the baking area, of course, usually in a grocery store. But I love going into the produce section mm -hmm. and buying fresh herbs. Right. It's something about them. It just has that pop of flavor. Yes. And it doesn't take it long for it to bloom, really. No, it doesn't. Where the dry ones, it takes, to me, it takes a little bit of time for them to wake up. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, and the cost is minimal when you really think about the, the added value to the dish. Oh, yeah. Oh, it yeah. really is. Yep. So what I like to do now is just put the fillets right on the pan. Yep. And I notice you don't take the skin off. You leave it right on. I leave the skin right on, if you can see that. Uh-huh. Well, you can buy salmon a few ways. Most folks get a little afraid of put, keeping the skin on, <laughs> but I'm going to show you my trick. Okay. 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 When, after it's cooked. After it's cooked. After it's okay. cooked. What it does is it keeps the, the moisture in the salmon to leave the skin on. Mm. It so really when you does. take it off, it'll dry it out a little bit. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to put this in the oven, uh, 375 degrees yes. in our pretty GE oven. And then how long are we cooking that for about? We're going to check it in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes. Yes. Okay. Let me see. There's my timer. One, five, oh, oh. Where's that hours? Oops. I went too many. <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes. There we go. Great. And set. Okay. We're good. 15 minutes on our salmon. All right. So what is the next step? The next step is the creamy dill sauce. Creamy dill sauce, all right, let's do that next. So we have a cup of sour cream. Mm -hmm. And again, those lemons are beautiful. This is so easy. I like in the same meal, being able to use the similar ingredients mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you, know, you don't have so many different things you're worrying about. Yep. Now, you know, it's funny, like this looks like, even if you didn't have the crepes, the salmon with the creamy dill sauce and the salsa, it looks like a meal you could pull together in like 20, 25 minutes. Yes. It's a beautiful dinner meal, isn't it? Yeah. Salmon's in already. It's yes. doing its thing. We're getting ready to do, wow. Okay. I'm I, with it. I started making the crepes when I realized I needed a good protein for a beautiful brunch. Okay. for my family. Mm -hmm. I was making salmon all the time for dinner and then I realized one day, hey, what about a brunch? Mm -hmm. And then that's where I, I decided that the crepes would be a good idea because people like pancakes. They, they do, <laughs> they do. It's like, crepe, what do you mean pancake? And that, as you analyze the recipe between the crepe and the uh, pancake, they're similar. You just gotta leave out that baking powder. So you don't get yes. that, that, that rise that you get in the pancake. And now we're making these beautiful, nice, thin crepes. Yes. Okay. So, okay. so far in your dill sauce, you have your lemon juice. And sour you have cream. your sour cream. Yes. Using some of that fresh dill. Oh, yeah. This is a creamy dill sauce. It's so simple. So really... People could do all sorts of variations to your creamy dill sauce if they wanted to play around a little bit, oh, yeah. like a creamy tarragon sauce yes. or uh, a basil sauce or something like that, depending on what their fancy might be that day. Yes. Or what herbs they might have left over in their fridge. Yes. Okay. Okay. So how did you get into cooking? I love serving my family. Okay. Now, what's your absolute favorite? Or Favorite meal of all time? Yes. Well, dun, 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 dun. I did a goose. I did a goose one time. Okay. It was beautiful. Okay. It was really fun to do. Okay. Yes. So that was your favorite all time? Yes. Okay. It was, now, it, it was a lot of work. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> but it was fun. I also have a really nice Jaeger schnitzel with homemade Jaeger pasta. Schnitzel. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. With in that in that dish, I use uh, basil with a little bit of bacon. 
Okay, well, you had me at bacon right there. <laughs> Everybody likes bacon. Yeah, don't. And, uh, Jaeger schnitzel and bacon. I don't know it's how beautiful. you could go wrong with that one. <laughs> now, what, what dish do your kids go nuts over? What's their favorite? Well, they did like the duck. They uh, did like the Jaeger schnitzel. Um, of course, the Thanksgiving meal is always a hit. Right. They right. do love my turkey and my stuffing. Okay. I have been known for my stuffing. You've been known for no, yes, I've been known. special with your stuffing. Well, I like to oh. stuff the bird. Okay. I do like to stuff the bird, and it's okay if the little bit of stuffing comes into the pan, and uh -huh. then it gets real crunchy. Uh huh. And gets all those pan drippings. They're right. beautiful. And then you just add that to the stuffing and kind of spread it around, and it create it. It's the pan drippings that are just so delicious. That bring it up to another Don't be level. afraid of the pan drippings. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, if you cook yeah. it, it's cooked. You cook, it's good. That's it. Okay, so you're putting in some more so dill. So I'm putting in a little bit of dill. I, I, I like to. Well, you could argue I'm going heavy on the dill, but it's all about the flavor of the herbs, that mm -hmm. bouquet, mm -hmm. you know? It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Now, it's funny. Normally, I have herbs growing on my deck. Yes. I've been so busy that I did not get my herb garden started. I'm kind of bummed. I understand. I didn't get mine started. You didn't either. get your started? No. <laughs> no. I, I bought these at the store. I got seeds like all in the house and my yeah. wife's like, so you when just you plant? not planting them this year? I'm like, I, it, it's September now. I don't right. know what to say. There's nothing to do but just <laughs> right. go to the grocery store. We got seeds for next year. We got seeds for next year. All right. Yes. So that's your creamy that's dill That's my sauce. creamy dill. Okay. We'll set that aside. Okay. All right. So we got some salsa ingredients over here. Um, she's got some basil. We have some onion. I'm gonna pass you the onion. Well, I would very much enjoy like to, <laughs> to cut this onion up. <laughs> I left my um, onion goggles at home. People are like, no, Chef goggles. Dana, you, I can't believe it. Well, you I, are a baker, I, right? I know, I know. Most people don't know I'm trained on the culinary side first, however, um, my eyes were always sensitive to the onions. This is a special onion. What kind do you got there? This is a Vidalia onion. Ooh, you got the good stuff. This is a Vidalia onion, and a Vidalia onion is sweet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't burn your eyes. Mm -hmm. You really can get these mostly in the summertime. Right. And uh, I recently took a trip to, to Georgia. Oh. And I said, well, let's explore Georgia. Okay. When I was down there. Let's drive around. Let's see what Georgia's all about. So I looked at my map and I saw a, a town called Vidalia. Don't tell me that. And I that's thought to myself, and then I looked it up on my phone and said, what is, is that where the Vidalia onion comes from? And sure enough, this onion is grown only in Vidalia, Georgia. And it's a very sweet onion, sweeter than sweet onions in the store. Okay because the soil in Vidalia, Georgia, does not have a lot of sulfur in it. Oh. And that's what makes that onion real sweet. L less sulfur, sweeter onion. Yes, well, look special Vidalia onion. So it won't make you, you won't need goggles for this. That's okay. I'm down with that onion then. Yes. I'm down with that onion. So I'll let you start chopping okay. the onion. Over here, we've got some tomatoes here. She's got some vine ripe tomatoes. We're gonna chop up. Now, uh, any size dice we're looking for on this? I like a smaller dice. Smaller dice? Yes. Okay. I'm going to dice these tomatoes. For all the kids out there, tomato is actually a fruit. <laughs> They're like, what? What are you saying? Right. And I know plenty of parents out there were like, oh, yeah, back in the day, we used to have tomato sandwiches and all that good stuff. Might have heard of fried green tomatoes. Yes. Now, it's funny, raw tomato, I do not eat. Interesting. I don't know why. <gasps> not even in a salsa? Well, see, in a salsa, yes, because okay. it's got all the other flavors mixed in there. Something about just the tomato, I don't. But as soon as you mix it with like Something anything. Something delicious. Basil. Oh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I know someone else, someone else I know doesn't like raw tomatoes. Really? Someone else I know. So I have learned that you can save time uh -huh. cutting an onion if you don't cut the end off. Okay. And you give it a few slices while it's intact. Okay. Okay. Now, 
Now, what's your favorite thing to make with tomatoes? Other than mango salsa. Other than mango salsa. <laughs> I like to, to roast tomatoes in the oven. Now, see, that I get down with. Like, yeah. oven roasted tomatoes mm -hmm. are like candy. Yes, very delicious. And maybe, maybe this is my baker's side. But so look, there's your onion, done. And I'm not crying. No, no tears. When I was at the University of Delaware, I was a prep cook in the dining halls. Oh, how fun. And of course, as the low guy on the totem pole, oh, you're definitely cutting up, cutting the onions, buddy. Look at that. <laughs> 50 pound bags. <gasps> and I would be oh in my. there just uh, crying your eyes out. Walking in the freezer, trying to get oh my eyes my. together. Well, if you were tortured like that as a youth, no wonder you're. <laughs> <laughs> I will not eat you it. You can't do it. Right. Okay. So we're just cutting up some tomatoes. How many do you think I need? Two, four? I don't think you need uh, two, I think, with two that one onion. It. Well, okay. I did half an onion. I mean, okay. So I'll do one more. I think so. And then uh, we got some basil. You want to chop up the basil? Sure. All right. I'm going to let you hold the Thank basil. Thank you. Fresh basil. Definitely advisable for a salsa. So again, I like to just, with these fresh herbs that are in the supermarket, just rinse them mm -hmm. and dry them with a paper towel. That's all you need to do. Okay. Rinse them in some water, cold water. Dry them with the paper towel. Dry them with the paper towel. Okay. And you can find basil in the store a lot of times, like as a, I guess you could say that they're pulling the whole plant. Yes. Most of the time with basil. Basil is one of those herbs that it does better when they pull the whole plant. Yes. And bag it versus some of the other herbs like parsley and cilantro. You'll see them chop the top off and yes. sell it. But basil likes to be in its own little soil. It likes to be rooted, I guess. With, yes. And not be in, I've tried to put it in water uh -huh. this way. It doesn't work. Doesn't like it. No, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like to be in the refrigerator either. Mm, too cold for it's it, I guess. too cold. Now, one of my other favorite herbs, rosemary. Mm. Although I was always having trouble growing rosemary in my, in my herb garden. Really? I don't know why. This would not take. Rosemary is beautiful with pork. Mm -hmm. If yes. you you ask me about a family favorite, a, my crown roast uh -huh. with rosemary is is good. It's good. It's good with the rosemary. <laughs> She's like that one. It's it was. Good. It's good. It's the rosemary. Yep. I was just cooking uh, this past week. I was at where was that? York Country Club. And we did a cracked coriander and rosemary oh. pork tenderloin. Woo. Now I now I haven't used coriander. Uh huh. Well, you know that coriander. Nice. Coriander, I call it the two for one spice because coriander is nothing but the cilantro seed. It's just not grown really? yet. Really? Uh huh. I didn't know. Not that. grown. So you can take some some coriander and food plant it. Because that's the little seeds that are dropping off the, um, off the plant. Mm -hmm. I did not know. And you'll normally get a two for one in that um, cilantro is one of the few herbs that when it's grown and so forth and you go to pluck it, normally it's going to drop its seeds and uh -huh. you'll get a second growth out of it for the seeds. Kind of, kind of interesting. That is interesting. All right. So, oh, wait a minute. I'm forgetting about the mango. We got to peel the we mango. Have to, I'm going to let you peel that mango. Okay. I'm going to have you teach me something about the mango. Well. Show me how to do it. I normally just peel it just like I do the apples. Okay. The, the, the toughest part, honestly, is figuring out where that pit is. I know. It's in there. <laughs> it's never centered. It, it's never centered, <laughs> but it's in there. Yeah. And then this is what we call a green mango, common to the U.S., um, other mangoes you might find are that Altufo. Sometimes they call it the champagne mango. My wife and I, we were on honeymoon uh, in Mexico and they had mango out there. And we're like, wow, why is this mango? It's so sweet. Oh. We're like, what is it? And they were like, oh, that's the uh, Altufo, that champagne mango. You'll see it sometimes in like the farmer's markets. They're becoming more prevalent in the grocery store. I've seen them in some of the local grocery stores now. Is it the same size as this, mm -mm. this type or it's is it larger? Smaller. No, smaller. So it would be about, honestly, half this size. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a golden color. It's, it's good though. 
really good. I mean, as soon as you taste it, you're like, oh yeah, it's definitely mango. Um, but normally it's just a little bit sweeter mm -hmm. than uh, the ones that we grew up on. All right, so I'm just peeling this mango here. Just about done. So when I was in the supermarket, I, when I found this mango, I had to, I had to really search. Search. <laughs> <laughs> because some because of they're them, not all ripe all the time. They're not some always ripe. Right. Sometimes, so yeah. So you got to try. It has to just be tender. Uh huh. Normally, the more tender it is, the sweeter it's going to be. Yes. Um, but the harder it is to peel. Correct. Correct. It might get a little, little loosey goosey on us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're going to cut this mango. Let's find out where the pit is. So I'm gonna slice into it. Oh, there and, it is. All right, there's a piece of the pit. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I slice this way, where is it? Okay, so the pit, okay, we're not doing bad. Let's see, oh. Oh, that's looking nice. Mm -hmm. How close can mm -hmm. I get? Okay, so the pit's hanging around right there, you can see Right on the inside there, we just started to touch that pit, a little white part right there. So we know the pit is sitting there. So my guess is, let's see, can I come down this way? Oh, a little too far. Okay, so our, our pit's contained within here. Let's see how much more of this we can get off here. Because we don't want to waste any mango. No. Okay. As you can see, we're getting close to her. There it is. There it is. Yep. Now you see the pit starting to show herself. Okay. Oh, is that our salmon? Sounds like salmon. Time to check. Let's check it. How's, how's it looking? How's it looking? So I like to do is I just like to open it up just a little bit uh -huh. and see. Take a peek. Take a peek. Uh -huh. What's it's it? Almost there. Almost. Another five minutes. All right, five more minutes. Five more minutes. So I like to say talk about checking it at 15 because salmon fillets have different thicknesses. They do. They do. Yep, they definitely do. Depending on the piece of salmon that you get. Yes. It can be. One day it's 15, next minute it's 20. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's important not to overcook it because right. when you overcook it, it's dry, and then dry fish is never good fish. <laughs> never good fish. Then it's like, then you have to definitely put all kinds of sauces all over it yes. to get through it. I know. I know. Okay, so we're cutting up this mango. We're going to add it to the salsa. So what's going to be our next step? We need to make these crepes. Ooh, all right, you wanna get started on crepes? Yes, and I need to get that pan going. Okay. So, it's so important that we have a nice hot pan. Mm-hmm. All right, so, we wanna do that. And fire up, there we go, fire right now. Fire it up, I like it. Right now it's on a medium. Medium's good. Medium's good, okay. Yes. So, all right. what do we use for the crepes? For the crepes. For the crepes, For yes. For the crepes. We're making crepes everywhere. Otherwise known as thin pancakes. That's right. All right, we have a cup of I'm flour. I remember the movie I was watching, and they just mentioned crepes the other day. <laughs> I think it was Talladega Nights. Oh, boy. Okay. That was, That's funny. That was a funny one. Yes. Two eggs. So, a cup of flour. Uh-huh. Two eggs. Okay. Cup of flour. Half two eggs. Half a cup of milk. So they're really that simple. That simple. Half a cup of water and two tablespoons of melted butter. It's so simple. So I like to remember a cup of, cup of flour, half a cup of water and mm -hmm. milk, two eggs. So say it again. So half a cup of water, half a cup of milk. Yes. And then... How two, much flour? Two eggs. Two, two eggs. Two tablespoons of butter. Two tablespoons of butter. So it's like lots of twos in there. Lots of twos. That's why it's a nice recipe. Easy mm -hmm. to remember. Easy to remember. Okay. And it's like crepes are cousins of the pancake. Yes.
Okay, so you mix them all together. Yes. And I like to do an even spoon of the of the mixture. Of the mixture. Okay. So they're nice and uniform. Uh-huh. So all the crepes are the same size. Yes. So I'll use this cup. And now you said you figured this dish out when you were working on a brunch? Well, I was thinking about a brunch and I wanted to do something special. Uh -huh. My family loves my salmon. And then I thought... How do I take my salmon and make it even more special level, yes. for brunch? For, for brunch. So you really... How should I say this? Though you design beautiful kitchens, you love to see people smile from your cooking. Yes, I'm with I you. do. I'm with you. That's what it's all about. Yes, that's what it's all about. Okay, so you got your mixture made. Pan's warming up. Yes. What's our next step? Next step is when that pan is good and hot, I'm going to pour. Okay. I'm going to use this half cup. Uh huh. To pour this into the pan and just flatten it out as much as I can. Okay. Roll it around in the pan. Get okay. that nice and even, thin, thin it out. Uh, okay. And I know this because of the amount of um, uh, liquid that was going into the batter uh, along with the eggs that it would be a. Um, tiny bit uh, thinner than the traditional pancake recipe. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. It, now, it is going to be thinner, yes. People don't have to, and I know my, my French friends are going to cringe when I say this, but they don't have to um, go out and buy a crepe pan. They don't. They, they could use a, a nice flat pan that they have at home? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's fun to have a crepe pan. When you buy a crepe pan, it usually comes with a wooden uh, flat. Oh, to help spread it. To help uh -huh. spread it, which is fun. Uh huh. And it comes with a wooden spatula, and that's fun too. Okay. But you don't have to have that. You don't have. To. You don't have to now. You, you can start with the pan you have at home. You can start with the pan you have at home. Okay. All right. So I'm just about done. Chop, chop, chop in here. Let's see if we're. You need to heat that up just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Do you want the temp up a little bit more? Yeah, we can raise that up a little bit more. Okay. You know, when, we, when I started out cooking, I was not a good cook. No? No, when you start out. All the out, stuff you're talking about, when Megan? When you start out, you're not good <laughs> at it, right? Yep, yep. You have to just not be afraid to do it. That's it. That's it. You'll have some culinary fa failures, and I, f I still have culinary failures. Not very often anymore because I do cook a lot, but, but it's okay. What's the worst thing that's going to happen right. with a culinary failure? You're going to learn something. You're going to learn something. I remember my younger brother, and he can cook well now. Like. He'll call me like, yeah, I made this, I made that, I'm, grill I'm grilling whole fillets, like the whole, um, the whole uh, tenderloin. And I'm like, what? And uh, I remember in the beginning, I used to tease him because I'm like, buddy, you couldn't boil water in the beginning. And now he, he cooks very well, very, very well. All right, so I'm mixing this all together. Now, you know what I want to add more of? What you want to add more of? Some more of that Vidalia onion. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't. Let me tell you, but you won't. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. So we've got our onions, tomatoes, basil, mango, and we'll let this hang out. Now, can they make this a day ahead of time? Oh, yes. And just let and Sometimes it kinda, it's better. Just let it sit and do its thing overnight? It do, yes. The okay. flavors come out. Mm -hmm. It's usually a better dish. Like okay. so many combined ingredients, it's better when it's overnight. Gotcha. Okay. It takes the pressure off the party, too, when you make it ahead of time. Amen to that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So that's okay. our salsa right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pour one of these crepes in. Now, sometimes I get impatient. Yeah, uh, would you be impatient? Sometimes I, I'm going to just smooth this out. Because uh. remember, we don't have that crepe spatula, and we don't need it. 
You just gotta make sure you just it gotta moves get around. it get it moving around a little bit. So it's not overly thick. Right. Just get it yep. moving around a little bit. And it's funny, crepes are one of those um, universal things, as I say in the world. Like, of course, here in America, we do quote unquote the pancake, but the rest of the world. They really know about crepes, like all the other countries. I mean, of course, France, but I mean, when you looked it up, there was like Denmark and Russia and Lithuania, mm -hmm. even Japan. So everybody has their own thing that they do with the crepes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And that's our, our starch, if you want to call it, for this dish. Okay. When, when it's time to turn the crepe over, see how it starts to... We got to flip get, it. Get, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See how it gets a little bit of the bubbles when uh -huh. they pop a little bit? Yep, yep. And they get, it just gets a little bit of... Like a little crust little, there. A little crust on the edge. Uh-huh. Yes. Now this is just a, what did you call this? Uh, uh, rubber, well, this, this technically is, silicone. This is a silicone... <laughs> spatula. Spatula, and it's heat resistant. Yes, so you can use it for this application. And yep. I like, because I like, you can get in there with this crepe more than a... A, a big spatula mm -hmm. when I, in a pan like this and it, it's a delicate mm -hmm. situation with this crepe and yeah, it's looking pretty good so oh good so now how do they flip it oh boy there you go Jeanette. I can do it, it. Worked it. Woo! Yeah. all right see so how long do they have to cook it on the other side approximately what was that a minute uh -huh. I mean not very long at all so once you flip it, it just takes another minute or so. It just takes so. about a minute, yes. Just cook the little bit just of batter minutes. that's left. Yep, that's all. So in the meantime, what I like to do okay. is get these fillets ready. Mm -hmm. So let's see how we want to cut this. And cut this nice. Now I'm going to show you my trick with getting this skin off. Okay. Do you have a spatula in your drawer, please? Let me see, another spatula. Well, let's get this going. Okay. With a nice edge. Okay. So what I like to do is I just like to, that's a hot pan. I just like to get in there and just get at the edge of that skin, see? Uh, that was my old McDonald's days when I could just grab a hot pan like that. <laughs> Those are, and not hurt yourself? And not hurt myself, right. All right, oh, and what yeah. happens is the skin stays in the pan. Uh huh. I saw. And it. then it there's just a fillet. Slid off there. Okay. Another thing I've done, and I didn't do it today, is I've pre-cut the fillet, so so you don't have to cut it. Uh huh. It doesn't take quite as long to cook that way, and it's a okay. little bit more uniform, a, a little neater. Okay. Because it's pre-cut. Uh -huh. It doesn't have this jagged edge like that. And then it's... it has a nice presentation. Gotcha. But the risk is it, it gets dry a little bit. Oh, when you, see make, when I when mean? you make the little guys. Let's uh -huh. see, how are we looking? We're looking good. Mm -hmm. right. So with the little guys. I'm gonna brown that on the other side, just a tiny bit. Get that little bit of caramelization. Just a little bit, I think so. So with the little guys, you can do it, but then you run the risk of drying it faster. Yes. In the oven. Okay. So, I mean, it's a balance. You gotta pick your. It's a balance. Okay, okay. So now, how do we pull this all together? What we do is we put we plate the crepe. Uh huh. Okay. Let's see how we're looking here. Yeah. And we add our fillet, our beautiful oh, fillet. Right. Whoops. Oh. Uh oh. See, see what happens in the kitchen. You caught her. I caught her. A clean kitchen is a good kitchen, in case well, you have some and, events and, like and that. And that's not, not making a, a, as we call a, a, a cheap crepe. She is like hooking this thing up. So the portion of salmon that she has in there has got to be, what, three, four ounces of salmon in there? Yes. Uh-huh. So she's got a healthy portion of salmon. Uh, now what are you adding there? This is the creamy dill the sauce creamy dill with the sauce lemon. With the lemon. Right? Beautiful. Uh -huh. Of course, I like a lot of this. It's so tasty, isn't it? Goodness. Okay. And then what else are we adding and here? And of course, you know, gotta, gotta make a little it dill little, sprig. Little little uh, dill sprig. Make it pretty. Make it pretty. There you go. Look now, are all our friends at Bath Kitchen and Tyler? Are they eating lunch like this every day? <laughs> Look, I'm oh, putting, they're gonna want to I'm, now. <laughs> I'm putting her on the spot, right? They're Everybody's like, now. what? Oh, she makes cra crepes. crepes. 
and, and salmon. Yes. Yep. Now crepes is one of those things, we're here using it in the savory capacity. Yes. But it can also be used quite often for dessert. Um, crepe Suzette's is a very, very popular uh, dessert. It's made with uh, orange segments, a little sugar, oh, a little Grand great. Marnier and butter. And they cook that together, throw the crepes in there. And I mean, it is delicious. We don't want to go light on the cream sauce. At all. All right. At all. Well, there we have it, guys. There it is. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm here today with my friend Jeanette from Bath Kitchen and Tile. We have made a beautiful crepes with a dill sour cream sauce. Yes. And a mango, mango salsa with the sweet fidelity onion. <laughs> I'm Chef Dana. This is my buddy Jeanette. And this has been the Chef Dana Show. Tune in, check us out next time on DETV.